crafty friends welcome to another not just christmas in july video today i'm going to make a tree themed card for you using these supplies if christmas in july isn't your thing don't worry you can adapt these designs to any occasion stick around to the end of the video because i'll be showing you some other cards that i've made using this design idea and similar tools and supplies the first thing I'm going to do is create my Christmas tree and I'm going to do that by smushing some evergreen bough distress oxide onto this scrap piece of white mixed media paper. This is a technique that you could easily batch, you could cover a whole piece of card in the distress oxide or in any ink of your choice. In fact, I think I'll do this whole piece, but you could do a bigger piece if you wanted. May as well use up the ink. I'm doing it this way with my mini smusher just to get a kind of variegated pattern. I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer and then go over with a bit more, I think. That's dry enough. Just get a little bit more ink, a little bit more water and a little bit more smushing. Right, I'll dry that again. So what I want now is a Christmas tree shape and I'm gonna simply draw a tall, thin triangle on my piece of paper and cut it out with a pair of scissors. It doesn't matter if it's a bit wonky. In fact, the more whimsical, the better, I think. I do want to add some more texture to my Christmas tree so I'm going to pop it on this swirly embossing folder from Tattered Lace and run it through my cuttle book. So that's got some lovely texture on it now. I am going to take my embossing tool and carefully just run around the outside to bevel the edges a little and that makes it look die cut rather than cut with scissors and it kind of get, gives it a finished look. So I've got two pieces of card here that I want to colour and cut into strips using these stitched strip dies. One of them I'm going to colour with tattered rose and the other one I'm going to colour with speckled egg and just do some simple straightforward blending. The strips are quite thin so any texture I put on these probably won't show up. Also, the strips have embossed stitching on them, so that's going to provide visual and physical texture. So I've got here a stitched rectangle panel that's going to go on my card front, but before it does, I'm going to add my little strips and I'm either going to add two tattered rows with a speckled egg in the middle or two speckled egg with a tattered rose in the middle. I just need to decide what's going to look best behind my Christmas tree. I think this one, I think there's a bit more contrast here. So I've got some high tack glue. I'm going to dip one of my tattered rose strips in here and use my T-square ruler to get it lined up so it's nice and straight. And if that one's straight, the other two should be as well. Press that down with some non-stick paper just to keep it clean because my fingers are already gluey. So I want to give my Christmas tree a trunk and I'm just going to take an off cut, the tattered rose off cut and colour it with vintage photo, just whatever's left on my sponge dauber. I'll put a dab of glue on the front of it so that I can stick it without dropping it 
to the back of my tree and I just want a tiny little bit of trunk poking out there and now I'll spread some glue on the back of my tree and stick that here and of course every Christmas tree needs a star unless of course you put an angel on the top of your tree but we always have a star on the top of our tree so I've got some gold glitter cardstock oh I can't speak and a small star punch so that's gone on there a nice little understated bit of bling you could punch more and add them as if they were maybe twinkling fairy lights or baubles or what have you if you wanted that more bling on your tree for my sentiment i printed off some merry christmases and cut them out with my stitched rectangle die and these could go pretty much anywhere in this area i think could go there could overlap the tree or could just go maybe there i think and now that can go on my card front and so here we have our finished card very clean very simple loads of white space lots of straight lines that's some colour and some visual texture and a teeny tiny little bit of bling. And here's another Christmas tree card I made along the same lines. I made the tree a little bit smaller. I didn't emboss it so it's a bit plainer. And instead of straight strips, I used this rickrack strip die and did three different colours. The one in the middle, you probably can't tell, but it's a shimmer spray coloured piece of cardstock that I used. So it's got a bit of shimmer to it, but not too much. And I did overlap the sentiment this time with the tree. I'd be curious to know which one of these designs you prefer. I think I like the zigzaggy in the background, but I do like the embossing on the tree. So for some of my Christmas cards this year, I might combine the two. Right, here's another one that I made. This is a birthday card this time. I stuck with a one colour for the zigzags in the background and I created a copper glitter cardstock butterfly which I backed with vellum and I added a butterfly body which I covered in Morning Dew Nouveau Drops to give it a bit of gloss and dimension. And I really like that one. I think it's nicely understated. And here's another happy birthday card. Again, I used the zigzags and this time I cut a gold foil balloon and gave it a little tail and a happy birthday sentiment. For this happy birthday card, I went landscape and I put a strip of the shimmer sprayed card down, a strip of gel print on top, added a inked die cut heart and then I stamped on the happy birthday and took a gel pen and did the stitching around the outside and I added some gold glitter card circles. And another happy birthday card. This time I just used my trimmer to cut the strip. So if you haven't got any fancy strip dies, you can still get a really nice effect with a trimmer or a guillotine. And all I did with this one was pop a gold foiled feather on top, which I backed with vellum again and added a happy birthday stamp. And here we have another landscape one. This time I use washi tape. So this is a purple washi tape with white flowers on. And this is a strip of rose gold glitter washi tape. I added a sending love sentiment. And for my focal image, I used a vellum postage stamp die cut and a pink die cut envelope. And out of the envelope, I put some gold foiled hearts that I punched. And I think the two different kind of metallics work just fine together. And we've gone the sending love again. I've got a simple band of gold washi tape with a strip of green gel print on top. To cut that, I use these strip dies. They literally just cut strips. And then I die cut lots of white flowers, bundled them together and wrapped some gold thread around them and stuck them on with some mini glue dots. We're back to some happy birthdays now and instead of having the strip down the bottom of the card I put it towards the top and I used washi tape in the background with a zigzag strip on top and then I added a gold foil bow and a happy birthday sentiment. And now for a thank you card. I wanted to use this house plant in a pot and I thought a brown 
backdrop would look nice. So I inked some strips in Vintage Photo, so the top and the bottom are Vintage Photo, and the middle one is Walnut Stain. The middle one is actually a bit wider than the top and the bottom ones, just for some variation. I coloured my die cut with Distress Oxides and added a thank you stamp. I think it might look quite nice with some glaze on the leaves as if it was a very shiny leaved plant. So I might do that later. And here's another one where I popped the band up at the top. I decided to cut some bands from this yellowy, shimmery cardstock. And it reminded me of ice cream. So I thought I'll cut an ice cream, but I'll do it in pink and purple so it contrasts with the yellowy cardstock. And I thought I'd throw in a bluey, I think it's peacock feathers, a gel print as well, just for some more colour and a bit of contrast and the sentiment says simple and perfect and you could use this for all sorts of occasions I think for anyone who likes ice cream. This one is really clean and simple again the bands at the top I used a brown washi tape and a thinner teal green washi tape I added a gold foiled camera and inlaid some white bits in the apertures in this part of the camera just so that it was solid rather than being able to see through to the washi tape underneath and I nestled the sentiment big smiles in here by the camera and this could be a card for anyone who likes photography really I think. For this card I used this scallop die to cut some gold glitter scallops which I stuck on down the bottom again and I used a pink bit and an orangey yellow bit from my box of backgrounds and bits to cut out these macarons and stacked them up. And the sentiment says a fun treat. So again, that could be multi-occasional card. And that's it. We've got a relatively clean and simple, quick and easy Christmas card and a whole stack of non-Christmas cards made with a similar design, similar tools, similar supplies. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you lots of ideas for things you can do with dies and papers that you already have in your stash. Do let me know in the comments which of these cards you prefer or if you prefer any of these. I would love to hear your opinions. And I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.